Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts. Start in Azkaban. Chapter 21. Chu He didn't reveal the Voldemort parasite on the back of Quirrell's head for the first time. Although he was sure that he could defeat Voldemort under this magical power, he was not 100% sure. After all, Voldemort is the nightmare of the wizarding world, the god in the heart of the Death Eaters, maybe he has some special life-saving skills that he doesn't understand. Not to mention that this classroom is full of freshmen at Hogwarts, and Cassandra, who has received preschool education at home, can protect herself to a certain extent, and other students can be regarded as hostages of Quirrell and Voldemort. The fight is here, and he is the one who suffers from the hostage restriction. A casual ejection of the life-suffering charm could take someone's life. What should I do if the teacher who is teaching has Voldemort on the head? Urgent, online and so on. Of course it was whistle-blowing. After all, this was Dumbledore's territory. Professor Quirrell, Chu He, who had made up his mind, raised his hand to interrupt Quirrell, who was stammering in class. What, what's the matter, Chu, classmate Chu He? Asked Quirrell, looking terrified. My stomach hurts and I want to go to the bathroom. Okay, okay, you, you go. Quirrell graciously agreed, and the students at Hufflepuff couldn't help but let out a faint laugh. Cassandra glared at him fiercely, and the laugh disappeared. Then Chu He walked out of the defense against the dark arts classroom from Cassandra's side, and then Chu He applied an improved confinement magic on the door to prevent Quirrell from running away from suspicion while he was shaking. Then Chu He ran quickly to the transfiguration classroom, where Professor McGonagall was grading the homework the students had done in the previous class. Professor McGonagall, Chu He, this should be class time. If you skip class for no reason, I'm afraid I'll have to deduct points from Slytherin branch. Professor McGonagall said seriously, I have something urgent, I hope you can take me to Headmaster Dumbledore. Chu He said seriously, the reason why he didn't go to Snape, the dean of his branch, was because he didn't know Snape's whereabouts at all. There was no Snape's class today, so he couldn't find Snape without using large-scale reconnaissance magic, but used this scanning-type magic, might scare Quirrell away and he secretly asked Professor McGonagall to take him to Dumbledore. Quirrell must now teach students in the classroom, which completely blocked the possibility of Quirrell escaping. After all, Quirrell can't just skip class when there's something wrong, he's a professor. Chu He, you know that Headmaster Dumbledore has a lot to do. Professor McGonagall hesitated for a moment, then confirmed that, to be honest, she felt that Chu He was a proper child. Otherwise, she would be caught and deducted points without saying a word by wandering outside while other students were teaching. I know, but if you don't take me today, you will regret it for a whole year, I can guarantee it. Okay, come with me. McGonagall put down the pen for grading the homework, closed the door of the classroom and took Chuhi to the principal's office. She decided to make an exception for Chuhi and took him to Dumbledore to see what was going on, in time. Headmaster Dumbledore, Chu He said he has something very urgent for you. After pushing the door open, McGonagall spoke. Ah, Chu He, what's the matter? Dumbledore smiled kindly. I saw Voldemort. On the back of Professor Quirrell's head, he used the parasitic magic of the soul to parasitize Quirrell, relying on Quirrell's magic to maintain his existence. Now Quirrell is teaching in the black magic classroom. Chu He didn't grumble, and simply finished what he had to say. Dumbledore and McGonagall looked at each other, and they both rushed out of the principal's office at the same time. Although the possibility of Chu He's statement is very small, as long as Voldemort is involved, even if it is small, it should be strictly investigated. Chu He, on the other hand, cast a speeding magic on himself and followed Dumbledore and McGonagall. After all, he was young and short, and without this magic, he could not keep up with Dumbledore and McGonagall. At this time, Voldemort, who was living on the back of Quirrell's head, really cared about Chu He. He felt a little magic falling on Quirrell just now. The source was Chu He, but when Chu He glanced at his position, he again after chatting with the female student beside him, he felt relieved. After all, what can a nine-year-old child do, let alone go to the toilet in class, this is simply a child who has not grown up. Just as Voldemort thought so, with a creak, the door of the defense against the dark arts class was suddenly pushed open. Disappear without a trace. As soon as Quirrell heard Chuhi's voice, the scarf wrapped around his head was wiped away by the vanishing charm. 
Voldemort, who was growing on the back of his head, stared blankly at Dumbledore and McGonagall standing beside Chu He. McGonagall doesn't matter, but the problem is the Dumbledore he was afraid of in his heyday. This, this kid, did you secretly run to call someone just now? Do you want to face? You shameless brat. The recovered Voldemort glared at Chu He with hatred, and then turned into a cloud of black smoke and escaped from Quirrell's head, intending to rush out of the house, but due to Chu He's reminder, Dumbledore, who had already taken the lead, naturally wouldn't let it go. Run him. The ultimate bondage. A white light swept out of Dumbledore's wand, instantly forming an airtight web of light that enveloped the black smoke made by Voldemort's soul, and then quickly reduced into a small bottle of light and flew back to Dumbledore's hands. At this time, Quirrell had already drawn out his wand in anger and shouted at Chu He. Avada Kedavra, accept your weapons. Of course, it wasn't Chu He who shot, but Professor McGonagall on the side. The crimson beam of light instantly overwhelmed Avada's green beam of light in a furious gesture. Quirrell, whose magic power was not as powerful as McGonagall's, was instantly hit by a magic explosion and hit the wall. Sleepy. Professor McGonagall flicked his wand and filled a control spell, knocking Quirrell unconscious. Child, are you alright? McGonagall nervously looked back at Chu He, this is Hogwarts's treasure, if something happens to him, well, Chu He's face is calm, as if the death curse just now is no different from eating and drinking. This makes McGonagall mistakenly think that Chu He still doesn't understand the power of the life-suppressing spell, but he doesn't understand, this kid shouldn't have anything to do with these evil spells, with his strong curiosity, in case it is used to improve the life-suppressing spell curse is not good. What McGonagall didn't know was that Chu He was too familiar with the life-suppressing spell, even more proficient in using it than Quirrell, and his life-suppressing spell had already been improved. The reason why he wasn't afraid, just because he didn't have to dodge Quirrell's death-killing spell at all. It's all right, Professor McGonagall, your support is very reliable, I'm not injured at all. Chu He replied with a smile. Voldemort's being held by Dumbledore, to Quirrell's life-threatening spell on Chu He and then being stunned by Professor McGonagall, it all happened between Lightning and Flint, so much so that the short magical duel was over, the Slytherin and Hufflepuff the students panicked. Cassandra quickly ran to Chu He's side to check whether Chu He was injured or not. Quiet. The panicked students in the classroom fell silent as Dumbledore let out a high, magically empowered roar. Dear classmates, the danger has been lifted, you are safe, don't panic. Dumbledore spoke to comfort the students. Minerva, these children will be comforted by you, Chu He, you have done a very good job in this matter, Slytherin, plus 200 points. Dumbledore said generously, Chu He, you are awesome. Cassandra happily kissed Chu He's face directly. Ahem, headmaster, do you mean Voldemort's bonus? Chu He opened his mouth and hinted. He shook people over to catch Voldemort. On the one hand, keeping Voldemort as a troublemaker would not benefit him in the future. On the other hand, Voldemort's bonus in the wizarding world was as high as tens of thousands of gold galleons, but no one had the qualification to go there before. Take. This is the god of wealth, if Dumbledore dismissed himself with 200 college points, it would be too much to say. He is not a rich second generation, and he has to earn money by himself, so naturally he has to care about such things. Don't worry, you won't be missed. I think you will gain a lot by reporting this matter, but now, please come out with me first. Dumbledore gestured to Cassandra with his eyes, and Cassandra let go of Chu He. Then Dumbledore took Chu He to his office, and put the vial of ultimate binding aside. Chu He, you have made a great contribution. Dumbledore cleared his throat. I think after this news spreads, first of all, you will receive bounties from all aspects of the wizarding world and the bonuses Voldemort has accumulated over the years, and I am afraid that there will also be the Medal of Honor, Reputation, and Status of the Merlin Order. But I hope you can see the path of your life clearly, and don't be blinded by these fame and fortune. Dumbledore said earnestly, the award, he thought of course he should award Chu He, after all, Chu He found out Voldemort's heartache, but he was worried that Chu He was ruined by these honors. Having said that, he can't forcefully take these honors from Chu He either. I've been in Azkaban. Dumbledore was silent, he knew it. The property that the Ministry of Magic has confiscated from me is not a small amount. I have had wealth, I have lost it, and I am still myself. 
But even so, you killed those two muggles. Human life shouldn't be so cheap. Professor Dumbledore, I grew up in a Death Eater's house. After the Death Eaters died, all I dealt with were dark wizards. If they were enemies, they were courting death. Those two muggles wanted to rob me. I just fought back as always. That's it. It's just that when I killed the Death Eaters and the Dark Wizards, the high-ranking people in the Ministry of Magic turned a blind eye. When I killed the wicked among the Muggles, they came to the door and threw me in the righteousness. Skaban. I don't think I did anything wrong. Those two Muggles should be fooled. If they didn't die in my hands, they would rob other Muggle children. Did I really do something wrong? Chu He looked at Dumbledore with clear pupils. Facing Chu He's unblemished gaze, Dumbledore fell silent. I just hope that you can sometimes give others more opportunities to rehabilitate. I am afraid that you will become a person with great influence in the future. If you kill people at will, you may become the next Tom. Although I don't consider myself to be a pure and good person, the people who died in my hands basically did bad things, and most of them were full of evil. Dumbledore stared at Chu He silently, his mood was a little complicated now. He saw a very firm will in Chu He's eyes, and in some respects, Chu He's starting point was not a bad starting point. But what will this overly upright attitude bring to the wizarding world in the future? Chu He doesn't care about the laws of the wizarding world or the rules of non-interference with muggles, he treats everyone equally. Even after being in Azkaban, it doesn't look like he has changed his attitude. When Chu He was only nine years old, he was able to discover what he couldn't even discover, the remnant of Voldemort residing on Corel's body. It was certain that his future achievements would not be lower than his own. And Dumbledore is very aware of the influence of a great wizard like himself on the wizarding world. If the future Chu He chooses to interfere in Muggle affairs at will, it may once again set off the persecution of wizards by Muggles in the 13th century. After all, there are too many muggles compared to wizards, too many. Moreover, he couldn't see through the child Chu He, who was raised under the training of Death Eaters, would it really be so righteous? Dumbledore's eyes became deep and mysterious, and he decided to use legilimency on Chu He again, and this time, he decided to take Chu He seriously. He wanted to confirm what kind of person Chu He was. He's the headmaster of Hogwarts, but also a wizard and doesn't want to see the wizarding world decay in decades. Professor Dumbledore, won't you take out your wand? Please don't underestimate me too much. Even you can't see through my occlumency with only your pupil power. If you want to see through my occlumency, use this kind of half-baked trick. Attitude is not acceptable. With a sneer, Chu He pulled his wand out of his sleeve and took a fighting stance, but he didn't expect that his capture of Voldemort would make Dumbledore plan to use legilimency to spy on his mind. This makes absolutely no sense. Is this old man Dumbledore confused? After all, he was only nine years old, and he grew up in Nocturne Alley, and he didn't think about more than ten years later like Dumbledore. But no matter who the opponent is, don't even think to spy on his thoughts. Not even the legendary legendary Archmage Dumbledore. If Dumbledore really took out his wand and started to fight with him, he would start with Dumbledore a little bit, and then run away through the improved apparition, and then he extracted some of his memory and handed it over to the major newspapers to reveal the identity of Voldemort in his own disclosure. The inhumane treatment that followed. A great wizard like Dumbledore, this kind of negative news, is what every magic newspaper wants, and he is confident that he can make Dumbledore black. No way, Dumbledore, whose magic power has reached a white level, is not what he can deal with at the magic level now, and he can only use these despicable means. That's how he fought to survive Nocturne Alley. He will do anything to achieve his goals, whether it's a spell or a fishing reel's heart, as long as it works, he will use it. Take it easy, Chu He, I apologize for making you feel uncomfortable, I was just a little curious about you, how on earth did you see through Voldemort's boarding house? Dumbledore lost the magic in his eyes, he didn't want to break up with Chu He. Then you should ask directly instead of trying to read my mind with the rude behavior of Legilimency. Chu He said coldly. Although Dumbledore's language and demeanor are very kind, he doesn't trust anyone easily when he grew up in an environment where dark wizards are rampant, so what about Dumbledore? Can that tell me how you found out he was boarding Corel? You made a temptation to disregard my wishes, and you still want me to tell you my secrets. 
There's no such reason. If you want to know my secrets, be my friend first, and then I'll say goodbye. It's nothing. After Chu He finished speaking, he turned and walked out of the headmaster's room, and at the same time he was vigilant of Dumbledore's sneak attack behind him, but Dumbledore did nothing but watch Chu He leave the headmaster's room. He's such a handsome boy. Dumbledore sighed. He didn't expect that he would run into a wall with his own reputation. At the same time Dumbledore began to reflect on himself. Although his starting point is indeed good for the wizarding world, in order to prevent Chuhi from bringing disaster to the wizarding world, he wanted to use legilimency to read his thoughts. After all, even if Chuhi's character is really upright and kind, his future actions may lead to a war between wizards and muggles. If Chuhi's character is as evil as Tom Riddle, then the next paragraph time will likely be the darkest era in wizarding history. He has already taught a Voldemort, and he doesn't want to train another Chuhi who is more terrifying than Voldemort. After all, Voldemort didn't have such a brilliant record as Chuhi when he was nine years old. He had entered Azkaban, killed Death Eaters, Dark Wizards, and found Voldemort that he couldn't even find. The most important thing is the courage, the courage to face yourself even when you are young. The Sorting Hat, why wasn't he sorted into Gryffindor? Dumbledore asked. With the courage of Chu He, coupled with the integrity he showed, he should have gone to Gryffindor. If it was Gryffindor, he would be more at ease. That's what he asked for. The little girl from the Cassandra family has a certain affection for him. On the train to Hogwarts, the two agreed to go to Slytherin together. A mouth formed in the fold of the sorting hat, which was placed on a shelf nearby, and the conversation followed. Although he failed to crack Chu He's occlumency, Cassandra's mind did read it, so she knew about Chuhi to a certain extent. What about his personality? Dumbledore went on to ask, Chuhi didn't let him use legilimency to peep into his mind, so the sorting hat must know something, right? Quote dot dot dot. Cough cough, this involves the privacy of the students. I can only say that he is really talented. The founders of the four major branches will see him, and they will love him and want to include him in the school. The sorting hat was embarrassed. Haha, ha, he couldn't admit that he couldn't see through Chu He's occlumency, he still had to save face. It turns out that even your legilimency couldn't see through him. Dumbledore can be considered an old fox who has lived for a hundred years. When he saw the embarrassment of the sorting hat, he suddenly realized. Who, who said I didn't see through him? The sorting hat was suddenly angry. He all said that I can't see through his occlumency without a wand and it's normal that you can't see through, so don't worry about it that much. He's going to be an outstanding talent. The sorting hat spoke comfortably to Dumbledore. Quote dot dot dot. Of course I know, but is this a good or bad trend for the wizarding world? Dumbledore sighed, Chuhi was so good that he couldn't see Chuhi's future clearly. But right now, it was Tom who was more important. Dumbledore turned his gaze to the vial of the ultimate restraint on the table. At this moment Voldemort's grey soul was struggling and roaring frantically inside. This high-end magic spell can isolate all sounds and movements inside and outside, so Voldemort in the conversation with Chu he just now didn't know it, and the voice of Voldemort who was constantly cursing couldn't be conveyed. To be honest, this was the first time he managed to capture Voldemort alive. Voldemort is a very insidious and cunning dark wizard. When he fought against him in the past, he could beat him, but he would run away without hesitation, or even drop his hands to hinder himself. So Dumbledore never succeeded in catching Voldemort alive. He didn't expect Chu He to help him catch Voldemort on the first day he came to school. It is not difficult to destroy this weak soul, but can it really kill Voldemort by simply obliterating this soul? Dumbledore picked up the vial of the ultimate bondage, and looked at Voldemort, who had been locked in it. Although if he could, he wanted to suppress the news and slowly figure out Voldemort's hidden conspiracy in the dark until he could kill him completely. But the problem is that Chu He revealed Voldemort's real body in front of a large audience, and this matter can't be suppressed, and it must be reported to the Ministry of Magic. The Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge, is naturally pleased with this, because he is a person who is afraid of danger. Once he hands over the ultimate restraint bottle that holds Voldemort in prison, Fudge will definitely ask himself to immediately obliterate Voldemort. All clues were cut off. And the next time Voldemort came back, he would be more cautious and careful. After surrounding the entire headmaster's room with the ultimate binding charm, 
Dumbledore opened the bottle cap, and Voldemort's gray soul jumped out of it, then rushed towards him. Dumbledore tapped his wand, and a chain of white light bound Voldemort's soul again. He he he, Dumbledore, I will be back, that brat, I really underestimate him, next time, I will never lose to you again. Voldemort, bound by the chains of white magic, looked at Dumbledore with hatred. You won't have that chance. Dumbledore raised his wand, and the powerful legilimency quickly invaded Voldemort's mind, without even being hindered, because in fact Voldemort's soul did not resist at all, not even using occlumency. He read nothing but Voldemort's hatred and desire for resurrection. Ha ha ha, Dumbledore, do you really think I'm going to take a risk to come to you? Before I came here, I've made myself forget everything that's important, you don't get anything from me, you get nothing from me here. Are you not reconciled? Even when Dumbledore caught him, Voldemort growled triumphantly. As expected, Dumbledore calmly waved his wand and locked Voldemort in the ultimate restraint bottle again. Oblivion can be used on himself, and it is clear that Voldemort was ready to be discovered by himself before he lodged on Quirrell. Even he couldn't recover the secret he wanted to know from Voldemort's blank mind. Chu He, who had left Dumbledore's office, raised his vigilance towards Dumbledore to a new level. Sure enough, the old fox who had lived for hundreds of years could not speculate with common sense. He clearly helped him catch his old enemy Voldemort, but he didn't expect that he would actually want to use legilimency. Read to see your own thinking. Do normal people do this? Although he didn't fight him this time due to Dumbledore's concession, Chu He knew very well that once he really fought, he would only have to run away. It had been a long time since he had tasted this powerlessness, very bitter. It's better to break the curse on the most evil magic book from Borgen's hands and improve your magic level. Magic training is not achieved overnight, and he can't expand the upper limit of magic power in his body to the level of white magic power in a short period of time. Therefore, to fight against Dumbledore, you need to master more powerful and more esoteric magic. And this kind of magic spell is basically an ancient magic spell that has been lost for a long time. There is no way to find it in modern books, only the most evil magic book may record it. When he reached the entrance of the stairs, Chuhi saw Snape in black robes walking towards him. You, found the mysterious man. After coming to him, Snape crouched down and confirmed it with a straight up gaze. Yes, he was boarding on the back of Professor Quirrell's head, and I called Professor McGonagall and Headmaster Dumbledore to catch him. Chu He nodded in recognition. Follow me. Snape grabbed Chu He's wrist and quickly led Chu He to the inside of a classroom. Some were curious about what Snape was going to do to him, so Chu He didn't resist. Even if Snape was disadvantaged against himself, he could escape Snape's attack by being able to cast spells without a staff. After entering the interior of the classroom, Snape drew his wand and applied an anti-unlocking spell to the door lock, preventing the classroom door from being opened from the outside. Silently, after applying a silent spell again, Snape retracted his wand into his sleeve. Chu He, you must listen carefully to what I say next. Although you have succeeded in getting Dumbledore to capture Voldemort, this is by no means an end. On the contrary, your future situation will be very dangerous. Snape grabbed Chu He's shoulders and said with a serious look. Why? Isn't Voldemort already locked up by Dumbledore? Could it be possible that he can let Voldemort go? Chu He looked at Snape in surprise. No, of course Dumbledore won't let that person go, but he's immortal, I don't know why, but he always finds a way to come back. You have to keep him safe at all times, don't take it lightly, once you see any danger, come to me immediately and if you don't have a chance, surrender to him with due consideration, and then find an opportunity to escape. Snape said seriously, he finally found a good successor, and it would be too painful to kill Voldemort in the future. That is, can he come back to life through some kind of magic? Since it is related to his own life safety, Chu he naturally has to ask clearly. Although he does not understand why his dean cares about him so much, it is always a good thing to get information. I think it should be some kind of magic. I know all about potions for nearly a hundred years, and there is no potion that can bring people back to life. He is suspicious by nature. Even if I used to work for him by his side, I didn't know much about it. Understand, you must be careful not to get lost in the next glory, or one day he will take your life when you are satisfied. 
Professor, can I ask you a question? Say, why do you care so much about me? I don't think what you said is something that a branch student should know. Chu He asked curiously. There was no good for no reason, no hate for no reason, he had to understand what Snape was thinking. Quote dot dot dot. You are the best Slytherin I've ever seen, elegant, mature, and you don't discriminate against muggles like pure blood. My life is full of regrets, and nothing has been successful. I want to accept you as a disciple. In the future, you will inherit my mantle, are you willing to be my disciple? I will dedicate my life to teaching you. Snape invited hopefully. Facing Snape's sincere invitation, Chuhi was a little confused. Well, it's actually a good thing to have a dean to teach Xiaozhao, but the problem is that Snape is so enthusiastic, maybe he will teach himself Xiaozhao supplementary lessons every day, or teach the knowledge of senior students. But the problem is that what he has to learn is not an ordinary spell. If he wants to fight against the famous Dumbledore for a long time, he needs some ancient forbidden spells that are stronger than Avada's life spell. Let's not talk about whether Snape has mastered this forbidden spell. Even if he mastered it, I am afraid that he will not easily teach it to himself. It is also possible that he has taken up his own free time due to the reason of making up lessons, so that he has no time to crack the most evil book. A curse on a curse. From the point of view of improving combat power, mixing with Snape is not conducive to his own development. Sorry, Professor Snape, thank you very much for looking down on me, but. I don't know you right now, please forgive me for not being able to accept your invitation. Chu He politely declined Snape's invitation, after all, Snape's attitude towards him was still very good. But in the end, he only met Snape yesterday, so there is no reason to be his descendant today. And the most important point is that he doesn't like to have a teacher-student relationship between superiors and subordinates. What he can accept is only a relationship at the level of friends. Snape sighed with a heart full of melancholy, then pulled out his wand to release the silent charm and anti-unlocking charm, then waved his cloak and walked out of the classroom in despair. Yes, my reputation among the students is actually not very good, maybe because I used to be a Death Eater, and some people from other branches have nicknamed themselves the Greasy Old Bat, like Chu He. It is only natural that such a proud person would refuse his invitation. Snape thought to himself, mockingly. Professor Snape, but I still want to ask you about potions, I want to be your friend. Looking at Snape's sad back, Chuhi was somewhat uncomfortable. He could understand this feeling of loneliness. After all, before he knew Cassandra, he was living alone and working hard. Friend. Snape stopped and looked back at Chuhi in amazement, his face, which was almost expressionless due to his mastery of occlumency, twitched unnaturally. He didn't expect Chuhi to say such a thing at all. In fact, after breaking with Lily Evans as a student, he has no friends, Voldemort sees him as a useful dog, Dumbledore sees him as a useful tool, he's just a double agent, Hogwarts sees other professors didn't push him too much, but it was hard to call them friends. Yes, he has always been alone. Ah, uh, I haven't made many friends. If you think I'm not qualified, please ignore what I said just now, sorry. Looking at Snape's distorted face, Chu He, who mistakenly thought it hurt Snape's self-esteem, apologized. No, you, qualified, I am, thank, thank. Snape reached out to Chu He stiffly. Then I'll ask the professor to give more guidance in the future. Chu He held Snape's icy palm and showed a sunny smile. Quote dot quote. At this moment, Snape made up his mind that even if Voldemort struck again, he would fight to protect the only friend in his life. I still have something to do with Dumbledore. The school is closed this afternoon. You can spend the rest of your time freely. Be careful and don't let up. After letting go of Chuhi's hand, Snape warned and hurried to the principal's room. Chuhi also left the classroom and started thinking about Snape's words. Voldemort will not die. He and Voldemort were inherently at odds, unable to cooperate. Once, in the house of the Death Eater who enslaved him, Chuhi knew a lot about Voldemort. First of all, Voldemort was an absolute ruler, and he could not tolerate existences on the same level as him. And Chu he can't tolerate being dominated by others. Since someone wants to dominate him, he can only kill him. That's how the Death Eater died. Voldemort, he must kill him completely before he can relax. And why Voldemort will not die, 
judging from his knowledge reserve, can be divided into three possibilities. First, Voldemort made a contract with the god of death or some hell creatures, and he could use their powers to escape death, but generally this would cost a lot. However, this cannot achieve true immortality, because for those hell creatures, the most precious treasure of human beings is the soul, and the soul of despair is the most delicious food for them, as a reward. If Voldemort pursues immortality, then obviously no demon is willing to sign a similar contract with him. He has studied this kind of summoning contract. The highest level that the demon can accept is to guarantee that he will not die within a certain period of time. After that, he needs to dedicate his soul to the demon who signed the relevant contract, so this possibility is very important to Voldemort. Should be small. Second, the effect is achieved through some kind of potion. Although Snape said that he knew about potions for nearly a hundred years, it should not be limited to a hundred years. Just like forbidden spells, many ancient forbidden spells have very powerful power. Modern spells are actually much less lethal than they used to be, and many lost potions are also very powerful. This can be seen from the fact that a single death attack can be classified as an unforgivable curse. Speaking of forbidden spells, he was once fortunate enough to learn about an ancient forbidden spell handed down in the 13th century, the eternal frozen soil. A year ago, when he went to a deep mountain to test the power of this magic, the moment he successfully cast the spell, all the magic power in his body was completely drained, the entire mountain range turned into an iceberg, and a blizzard blew across the entire area. If he hadn't cut off the connection with the magic spell in time, I am afraid that even his vitality would have been converted into magic power and completely drained. However, due to the interruption of the connection with the magic spell, he could not control the magic spell. Although he immediately drank the magic potion that could increase the recovery of magic power, he found that even the flow of magic power in his body was frozen and he could not use apparition to run away. Fortunately, he was at the edge of this forbidden spell as a spellcaster at the time, and he stepped out of the spell's influence with his legs, otherwise he would have to stay in it forever. And a week later, when he went to check the power of magic, he found that the iceberg had not melted at all, and all life, plants and animals in the entire mountain had been completely frozen to death. In Chuhi's opinion, this kind of only the power can be regarded as the word forbidden spell. To be honest, the three unforgivable spells stipulated by the Ministry of Magic are quite pediatric compared to the forbidden spell of the Eternal Tundra, and any Death Eater can easily grasp them. The only regret is that the casting time of this forbidden spell is too long, and the mana consumption is too terrifying. Even after his improvement, the requirements for casting spells have not been reduced too much. After that, Chuhi kept searching for the forbidden spell, but failed. So Chuhi was basically certain that the secret of Voldemort's inability to be killed must be related to the ancient forbidden spell or the ancient potion, and his fight against Dumbledore also happened to need these powerful forbidden spells that could not be dealt with by ordinary magic. Voldemort couldn't be born knowing the forbidden spell, and he also needed to learn about the forbidden spell through books or inheritance, just like himself. Voldemort went to school at Hogwarts, and the forbidden spells he used may be recorded in it, maybe he should go to the library at Hogwarts. Chu He, who is that man behind Professor Quirrell's head? Your spell that made his turban disappear is so powerful, what spell can you teach me? Chu He Chu He, what did Principal Dumbledore ask you to do? As soon as they got down to the first floor, Chu He was surrounded by the freshmen of Slytherin and Hufflepuff. And Cassandra stood at the outer edge of the crowd and looked at Chu He, who had attracted much attention. In her opinion, Chu He should become Slytherin's most dazzling star with her. So even though Chu He stole her limelight, she was happy for it. After all, Chu He is obviously so powerful, and the improvement of magic spells is something that many great wizards have not been able to do. Chu He should have been praised as a genius. As for herself, she has full confidence to stand by Chu He's side and is admired by the entire branch just like him. The school has just started, and she still has a long time to be the master and pride of the academy. At this time, Chu He, who was in the center of the new encirclement, had some headaches. The admiration and adoration of these new students did not help him in the enhancement of his strength, but would delay his research on magic and the search for forbidden spells. If you really want to meet a strong enemy like Dumbledore or Voldemort, they will only get in the way. 
he didn't enjoy the feeling of being adored at all. It's rare that he can find a place to break the curse imposed by the most evil magic if he doesn't have class today, he doesn't want to waste it here. Chu He took out his wand from his sleeve, and a powerful magic force burst out with him at the center, slightly shaking the newborn who surrounded him, and then left quickly. Okay, that's amazing, but it's too indifferent. We are all students from the same branch, and chatting with us won't waste his time. Seeing Chu He leaving, the freshmen of Slytherin branch complained a little aggrieved. Draco was secretly relieved by Chu He's unsociable behavior, and he preferred to isolate Chu He at Hogwarts. But there are also some girls who cast a somewhat admiring look at Chu He's back. After all, this handsome and powerful sense of coldness adds a bit of mysterious charm to Chu He. The lethality of these little girls is very strong. Chu He, who had left the circle of freshmen, wandered around Hogwarts Castle, and finally picked a dusty room and walked in. Although I don't know what this place was used for before, but from the accumulation of thick dust, it can be seen that no one has entered here for several years. For Chu He, this is just the right place to study the most evil magic book. After entering the house and closing the door, Chu He drew out the magic spell and continuously applied two magics, trapping enemies and curing without trace. First of all, the magic spell without trace curing can solidify the door and the wall together, so even if you use a unlocking spell like Araho Cave to open the door of this classroom, you need to use attack magic to enter this classroom. You have to force a hole in the door to get in. And the enemy trap behind the door will inform him that someone has invaded the room, giving him time to hide what he is researching. After making the defensive arrangement, Chu He took a small suitcase out of his pocket and put it in the corner. The traceless stretching charm. The space in the suitcase suddenly expanded rapidly. Then Chu He opened the lid and jumped in. The lid closed naturally, and then the outer layer of the suitcase triggered an illusion spell. Invisible magic power covered the box, and finally the box was integrated with the environment in the room. The phantom charm is a magic spell that can make the disguised person or thing become like a chameleon, with the color and texture consistent with the surrounding environment. That way, even if a certain professor invaded the room, he would have to be able to see through the illusion spell that Chu He put on the box after surviving the trap. The space inside the suitcase was about 10 square meters due to the seamless stretch spell cast by Chu He. In fact, his previous suitcase could be called a large magic research laboratory. There were all kinds of magic books and potion research equipment and raw materials that he bought from Nocturne Alley, but unfortunately the suitcase was and he was confiscated by the Ministry of Magic after his arrest, so this suitcase was prepared on the fly. Looking at the empty space, Chu He sighed slightly, and then took out the iron box containing the most evil magic book from his pocket. One day, he's going to hit the Ministry of Magic and get back the various things he's confiscated. After taking the most evil magic book out of the box and placing it on the ground, Chu He first applied a few conventional defensive magics to himself, and then carefully looked at the magic book with many curses applied. There are three curse spells in the outermost layer of this magic book. The most lethal one is the one that can quickly weaken the vital organs in the body. This is the curse magic that needs to be solved first, otherwise it will be bad luck if you accidentally encounter it. After observing for a while, the principle of the curse magic was basically established, Chu He took out a notebook and a quill and tried to construct the anti-curse of the curse magic. A few hours later, Chu He, who was trying to write an anti-curse, grabbed a mouse from the miniature breeding box, and then applied the anti-curse he just wrote on the rat, and then controlled the rat through the suspension spell to get access to the most evil magic book, Surface Layer. The body of the guinea pig shuddered suddenly, and then black blood overflowed from the mouth, nose and eye sockets. Huh, it really failed, it seems that improvement is still needed. After casting a disappearance spell on the dead mouse to deal with the dead corpse, Chu He continued to hold the notebook and revise it. The improvement process of magic spells is actually very boring and time consuming, but it can make him feel that he is getting stronger step by step, so Chu He likes to study magic spells very much. After three failures, the fourth guinea pig survived fortunately, and because it had no magic power in its body, it did not trigger the other curse magic attached to the book for the time being. After all, one of the curse magic adds a corrosive attribute to the magic power to pollute the magic power of the wizard, making the wizard unable to use the magic power normally and become a crippled person, 
and the mouse itself has no magic power, and naturally it will not be corrupted by the magic power. Of course, this is not difficult for Chu He. During the test, he only needs to forcibly infuse a small part of his magic power into the mouse, and then apply a magic to prevent the loss of magic power, and then test it again. The question, however, is how to address this characteristic of corrosion. There is no way to solve this characteristic in the books he has seen so far, and I am afraid that he will have to read books related to magic. After studying for so long, he was also a little hungry, so Chu He got out of his suitcase. There was no sign of interference with the enemy trap and the traceless curing spell previously set up in the room, and Chu He immediately released the two spells. At this time, the light coming in from the window was already dim, and it was obvious that it was almost night. Chu He left the neglected classroom and went to the dining room at Hogwarts to have dinner. When Chu He came to the dining room at Hogwarts, he found that students of all grades in each branch were sitting at long tables filled with all kinds of sumptuous food, but no one was eating, not even all the professors were sitting at their respective tables, and the atmosphere at the scene was very solemn. He's here. He's here. Our hero. Here comes the hero who brought down the mysterious man's conspiracy. Excited cheers erupted from the dining table of the Slytherin branch in the restaurant, and then the other three branches joined in the cheers. All the students cheered with force, and even the professors on the professor's chair also applauded. At this moment, the other three divisions did not cheer because Chuhi was from the Slytherin division. After all, Voldemort was a disaster for the entire wizarding world, so at this time everyone abandoned the prejudice and battled between the divisions, from the heart. Happy for Chuhi. Chuhi calmly came to the vacant seat that Cassandra had reserved for herself and sat down. Today, there is great news. Voldemort, who has been lurking for several years, was caught by me under the wit and bravery of Chu He. I think this is a day worth celebrating. Once again, I would like to ask you to raise your glasses to bless it. Dumbledore toasted. Seizing Voldemort is definitely something that cannot be overwhelmed. In this case, it is better to hold a grand celebration ceremony for Chu He directly. This will also bring confidence to the students, and at the same time, it should be able to pull in the relationship between themselves and Chu He, relation. After all, his rash use of legilimency caused a lot of resistance from Chu He. Most of the children are excited to become heroes. Holding a celebration banquet for Chu He should not make his relationship with him worse. As for Voldemort's conspiracy, it's up to the adults to investigate. All Hogwarts students raised their glasses to celebrate Chu He, even though it was just weak tea. Facing the crowd's congratulations, Chu He also raised his wine glass in response to the atmosphere of the scene. After the dinner, there were still many students from other branches who wanted to shake hands with Chu He. After all, the young man in front of him saw through the conspiracy of the legendary man who didn't even dare to mention his name on the second day of school. After dealing with all the students, Chu He dragged his tired body back to Slytherin's common room. Chu He didn't know it yet, and this was just the beginning of a nightmare. The next morning, when Chu He was taking Professor Flitwick's charms class with Cassandra, there was a knock on the classroom door. Professor Flitwick, excuse me, can Chu He come out? Professor McGonagall asked. Huh, Chu He, okay. Charms Professor Flitwick froze for a moment and readily agreed. Chu He stood up and went outside the Charms classroom. There were three men standing beside Professor McGonagall, two of whom were his old acquaintances. One of them had very short grey-white straight hair and a strong build. His name was Delixi. He was an Auror. The other was a troublesome black Auror named Kingsley. At that time, he ate two Crusader curses and still did not lose his combat effectiveness. It was because of his obstruction that Chu He was taken advantage of by other Aurors. Catch. The last man was a rich man, wearing a fitted suit and holding a cane. Yo, too, we meet again, are you here to catch me to Azkaban? Chu He showed a mocking smile. For the Ministry of Magic, which confiscated all his property, Chu He naturally has no good feelings, and his speech is also thorny. For Chu He's ridicule, Delixi and Kingsley showed embarrassed smiles on their faces. A few months ago, they were enemies with Chu He and sent him into Azkaban. Now we meet again, Chuhi it's normal not to give them a good look. Cough, how could it be, child, I have carefully checked your case, there is no doubt that the two muggles attacked you first, 
You are just a little too self-defense in this matter, that's all, important you have arrested the mysterious man for us, you are the hero of our magic world. The man with the cane excitedly stepped forward to shake hands with Chu He. You are. Out of courtesy, Chu He tentatively reached out and shook hands with the other party. Ha ha ha, I'm Connolly Fudge, Minister for Magic. So what's the matter with me? Chu He asked lukewarmly. Oops, Dumbledore told me you helped him catch you know who, the Ministry of Magic once offered a bounty of up to 12,000 galleons, I brought that part of the bounty, and I could see you must be a wizard who can achieve great things in the future, and you can come to our Ministry of Magic as an intern whenever you want. Fudge said eagerly. Although Chu He's attitude was not very good, Chu He exposed Voldemort's conspiracy and let Dumbledore capture Voldemort, which was a solution to the big stone in his heart, so he was very optimistic about Chu He. Oh, it turned out to be a bounty. By the way, when I was arrested by the Ministry of Magic, all my personal belongings were confiscated by you. Can you return them to me? Chu He asked. Yes, no problem. After I go back, I will say hello to the people in the magic item storage department and ask them to send you all your personal belongings to Hogwarts in good condition. Fudge said generously, now that Chu He is undoubtedly a celebrity in his eyes, he will naturally agree to this small request. So, what about the bounty? Here here, but boy, I suggest you go to Gringotts with us, and open a vault there and put the money in. It would be bad if you carried so much money with you. Fudge took out a dragon skin bag sold by the Ministry of Magic with a traceless stretch spell from his arms and handed it to Chu He. Chu He put his hand in and checked it with magic power. It was exactly 12,000 pieces. Kim Galleon. I have a vault at Gringotts, and I will deposit it myself when I have time. Chu He said and tied the dragon leather bag around his waist. Son, you have been able to fight many aurors before. In fact, I think you are qualified to be an excellent auror. Would you like to come to the Auror's office to work directly? I can make an exception for you. Fudge invited him. When he went to arrest Chu He, many Aurors were defeated by Chu He on the spot, so he was not kidding. Chu He is really qualified to be an Auror now. Originally, he brought the cash here with the intention of letting Chu He go to Gringotts with him to save money, and then on the road to persuade him to join the Ministry of Magic but he didn't expect Chu He to say that he would save it himself without giving any face, so he had no choice but to be digging in the face of Minerva McGonagall. Sorry, I have no interest in work, and now I just want to study hard at Hogwarts as a student. Chu He rejected Fudge's invitation in one bite, jokingly, he has so much bounty, even if he doesn't do anything, he can live at ease for the rest of his life, why should he work for the Ministry of Magic? What's more, Voldemort's affairs are not over yet. Snape has already stated that Voldemort will come back. Chu He can guarantee that the first person Voldemort wants to kill when he comes back will be himself, so he must start his own way and figure out Voldemort's immortality before Voldemort returns. Mystery, and then kill Voldemort first. If he worked for the Ministry of Magic, he would definitely waste a lot of his time, and a fool would accept Fudge's invitation to become an Auror. Okay. Okay, yes, it's better to stay at Hogwarts at your age, but make sure you think about a job at the Ministry of Magic after you graduate. Fudge smacked his lips with regret. He felt that Chu He was somewhat ignorant of praise, but Chu He's current image has been shaped into a hero in the wizarding world, and he did not dare to show Chu He's face. Of course, this was also Fudge's intentional instructions. Although it is said that Dumbledore arrested Voldemort, if Dumbledore's reputation is higher, it may threaten his position as Minister of Magic, so after receiving Dumbledore's report, Fudge decided to give the main credit to only nine-aged Chu He. After all, a nine-year-old was no threat to the Minister of Magic. And this kind of huge glory is likely to ruin Chu He and make him a lazy, ignorant wizard. At that time, he will be able to sit back and relax. He didn't believe that there were children who could withstand this kind of bullying. Fudge is very shrewd when it comes to maintaining his position of power. Indeed, if this kind of glory is imposed on Cassandra, Hermione or Harry Potter, Draco, or even any student at Hogwarts, it may be killed, but unfortunately Fudge met Chu He. Having been enslaved by Death Eaters since childhood, Chu He, who has been scorned and tortured, knows very well what is most important to him. Only strength. Chu He may use the influence that this glory brings him to do something, 
but Chu He will never put his treasure on it, because in his opinion, this kind of fame is ultimately the power of others, and not his own power. Since it belongs to others, there may be betrayal. That's okay, I'll go back to class first. Chu He said that he planned to go back to the classroom. Chu He. Kingsley stopped Chu He. Is there anything else, Lord Orr? Chu He looked back at Kingsley. Congratulations on exposing Voldemort's conspiracy and gaining fame, but if you use this fame to attack muggles, or to commit evil in the future, I will still appear in front of you and send you to Azkaban, don't go down the wrong road. Kingsley warned. Don't worry, I already know the consequences of shooting at muggles casually. As long as I am not threatened, I will not use magic against muggles at will. Chu He waved his hand and walked into the magic spell classroom. It won't be random. Kingsley was somewhat dissatisfied with Chu He's answer. In his opinion, the correct answer should be that he would not use magic against muggles, not that he would not use it at will. From another perspective, Chu He's meaning is completely that is, he wouldn't hesitate to use magic on muggles whenever necessary. But after all, it is Chu He, he can restrain his behavior to a certain extent is already a big improvement. I can only hope that he will not do bad things in the future. Let's go. Fudge turned around and left with Dalish and Kingsley. He doesn't want to talk to a little kid like Chu He, who is not good at first sight. Anyway, Chu He is going to study at Hogwarts for seven years, and during these seven years, he can be the Minister of Magic without any worries. Will suffice. For lunch, Chu He and Cassandra were surrounded by a large circle of senior students from each branch, many of whom asked Chu He to play, both boys and girls. As soon as Sandra got angry and drove away a group of people, another group of people would come around again, which suddenly made her angrily back to Slytherin's common room. Chu He, let's play Quidditch with our college team this afternoon. Slytherin's Quidditch captain Marcus Flint brought the rest of the team to invite Chu He. Sorry, I have something to do. Chu He politely declined Marcus's invitation. This time, Marcus's face suddenly became unbearable. He is a popular man in Slytherin. Now he has pulled down his body to invite Chu He, a freshman, and he has been rejected. It must be fun to come to the Quidditch pitch in the afternoon, don't let my pigeons go. Marcus pressed on Chu He's shoulder, leaned into Chu He's ear and said in a commanding tone. Are you teaching me what to do? Chu He put down the fork with the sausage and looked back at Marcus. No, no, how could it be, this is just a friendly suggestion from the senior to you. Marcus showed a sneer. Well, why don't we just omit the boring intrigue, and the seniors come to teach me in a friendly way. I said that I have something to do in the afternoon, so I won't play with you. Chu He stood up and drew out his wand, bowing gracefully in a magical dual pose. He he, I just happened to find that mysterious person and then called the principal to catch him. Do you really think you are so amazing? It seems that my senior should give you a lesson in sobriety. Marcus sneered and pulled out his wand. Chu He was about to fight Marcus in a magical duel, and the students around him were very excited to give up the venue for the duel. To know that Chu He entered Hogwarts for less than a week, he would have to fight a magical duel with Marcus, who had been studying at Hogwarts for four years. According to common sense, Chu He would lose. But according to Slytherin and Hufflepuff's first year freshman, Chu He's vanishing spell makes it so fast that even Professor Quirrell, who teaches defense against the dark arts, can't react. In addition, Chu He also found Voldemort lurking on Quirrell's body, which makes Chu He seem very unfathomable. This is definitely a very interesting magic duel. Go ahead. Chu He waved to Marcus. To deal with a new student of yours, I have to take action first. Marcus glared at Chu He with gritted teeth. If he shot first, would it be shameful? He studied at Hogwarts for four years, four years. If you don't shoot first, I'm afraid you won't have a chance to shoot. Chu He said casually that his previous opponents were dark wizards, death eaters or something, and Marcus was really nothing in front of him. Okay, since the junior brother gave me the opportunity so generously, then let you have no chance to shoot, and you are torn apart. Smashed to pieces, Chu He deftly sideways avoided Marcus's cutting spell. The cutting spell left a cut mark on the wooden dining table behind Chu He. At the same time, the smashing spell that came later rubbed Marcus as the cheek hit the thick stone wall of the restaurant, and after a huge explosion, more than half of the entire stone wall was reduced to rubble. Marcus, 
who remained in the posture of extending the curse in front of his wand, did not dare to move as if he had been hit by the petrification curse. At that moment, he really felt the shadow of death creeping up his spine. If the smashing curse hit him, he would definitely die. Will definitely die without a corpse. Senior, I'm really lucky, I've missed it too, don't you think? Chu He walked gracefully to the petrified Marcus, and tapped the part where Marcus had just been wiped by the spell with the tip of his wand. Marcus looked at Chu He in horror, not daring to move at all. He can now be sure that the smashing spell just now was deliberately missed by Chu He. Don't get in my way, next time, you won't be so lucky to miss you. Chu He reminded with a smile. Okay, okay, I see. Marcus lowered his head and looked at the ground. His eyes didn't even dare to fall on Chu He, who was a head shorter than himself. Quick fix. Seeing that Marcus had lost his will to fight, Chu He tapped his wand lightly, and the gravel on the ground seemed to revert to a solid stone wall along with the trajectory of the explosion as if time had elapsed. After repairing the stone wall, Chu He returned. When we got to the table, we continued to eat lunch. It was only then that the first-year freshmen gave out deafening cheers because of the terrifying lethality that Chu He had just burst out. You must know that first-year students generally have very little magic power, and they cannot release a smashing spell with such a lethal power. This can be seen from the fact that Marcus's cutting spell can't even cut the chair completely. The power of Chu He's smashing spell just now, even an adult wizard may not be able to release it which means that the magic power in Chu He's body is far superior to that of Marcus. And Marcus, whose legs were weak, was helped out of the restaurant by his team members. Chu He, me, can I sit next to you for lunch? A short-haired lowly wearing a Slytherin wizard robe asked expectantly with a lunch, Chu He remembers her as Pansy Parkinson's classmate year. As you like, Chu He shrugged. He wasn't so domineering that he wouldn't allow anyone else to do it after a meal. He had a magical duel with Marcus, and he wanted to force himself to the Quidditch pitch as a senior. He hated it the most. Someone forced himself, so he directly dueled with Marcus' magic. The reason why he showed mercy just now was mainly because Snape treated him well, and Marcus was also a student of Slytherin, so he was more or less covered by Snape, and it was not easy for Snape to explain if he wanted to hurt him. So it's enough to scare him so that he doesn't dare to come to his own trouble again. After receiving permission from Chu He, Pansy immediately took the seat that belonged to Cassandra and sat down. Then, that, your smashing spell is so powerful, can you teach me later? Pansy tried to ask in a gentle and lovely tone. No, I have something to do. Chu He indifferently rejected Pansy's request. The first thing he needs to do now is to first solve the mystery of Voldemort's immortality, and then find a way to kill Voldemort completely. Faced with a wizard like Dumbledore, who is filled with white magic, he will think about other things after he has the power to protect himself. On the other hand, Pansy came to her after she found out Voldemort, and it's hard to say that she didn't come to her because she was looking for a boyfriend to show off. Chu He doesn't want to be used as bragging rights. Pan Shi, who was mercilessly rejected by Chu He, was a little dumbfounded. She, she thought she was pretty cute, she had already taken the initiative to attack, why did she fail? You must know that an arrogant young lady like Cassandra is definitely not willing to lower her body to attack her like this, and she also thinks that she will definitely be able to attack Chu He. While Pansy was in a daze, Chu He quickly finished his lunch and then left the restaurant. There was no class for Slytherin to take this afternoon, so he naturally had to rush to break the curse on the most evil magic book. Chu He. Before Chu He could get to his research room, he was stopped by Flitwick, a professor of charms. Professor Flitwick, what's the matter? Chu He stopped, and he still had a good impression of this professor who patiently answered his questions about all aspects of spell science. Here's a letter from you, from Wizengamore, they're eligible to award the Order of Merlin. You debunked that Dark Lord's trick, you must be the youngest recipient of the Order of Merlin ever. You are proud. Flitwick happily raised his hand and handed the envelope to Chu He. Let me see. Chu He casually opened the envelope. Dear Mr. Chu He, congratulations on being awarded the Order of Merlin, first class. Please come to the Ministry of Magic seven days later, on September 10th at 1 p.m. to receive the award ceremony. Ha, huh, looks like I'll have to take a leave of absence from school in a week. Chu He sighed. 
You don't seem to be very happy. This is obviously the highest honor in the wizarding world, why? Flitwick asked a little puzzled. In his opinion, anyone from the magic world would be happy to receive this letter, but Chuhi's reaction was somewhat unexpected. Because I know what I've done, Professor, I just found Voldemort weak, and then called the dean to clean him up, it's not a big deal, it's not over yet, moreover, I think I don't need anyone to acknowledge my exploits. Chuhi shrugged, mainly because it would take a lot of time to go to the Ministry of Magic, just to receive a Medal of Honor that did not improve combat effectiveness. What's more, he was still a wanted criminal a few months ago, but now he can be regarded as a hero. If he kills another muggle, he will probably be stripped of his medal and become a wanted criminal. It seems that this Merlin first class medal does not have it. Too useful. Flitwick was shocked by Chuhi's words. His achievements did not need to be recognized by others. How powerful is this nine-year-old child? The last person he knew who cared so much about the Medal of Honor of the Order of Merlin was Dumbledore. You will surely become a great wizard in the future. Flitwick said with emotion. According to your auspicious words, I will try my best. Chuhi was about to leave when he saw Dumbledore walking over with a woman with curly blonde hair, thick lipstick, and ugly glasses that looked uncomfortable. There was a woman beside them. Male holding camera equipment. Chu He, this is Rita Skeeter from the Daily Prophet, she wants to interview you. Dumbledore pointed to the woman beside him and introduced it. Rita Skeeter gave Chu He a self-assured smile, and opened her fingers familiarly, beckoning Chu He over. I'm not interested in an interview, let her go. Chu He rolled his eyes, knowing that it would turn out like this. He kept the weakened Voldemort first, and there were a lot of time-wasting troubles looking for him wherever he went. You see, Miss Rita, I didn't mean to prevent you from interviewing the hero who exposed Voldemort's conspiracy, but he really doesn't like being interviewed. Dumbledore said, obviously he had tried to prevent Rita from seeing Chuhi before, but Rita ignored him and went straight to Chuhi and put her hand on Chuhi's shoulder. Oh, little brother, your interview will definitely be on the front page of the Daily Prophet, you will become a hot celebrity, your parents will be proud of you, and there will be all kinds of magic items. Come to you to speak, you can have a lot of wealth. Rita said enthusiastically, let go of your hand, or I'll hang you on the guard's lance on the tower. Chuhi turned his head indifferently and glanced at Rita. Rita raised her hand in fright at the murderous intent contained in Chuhi's silver pupils. She became more interested in Chuhi. Dumbledore, did you send her off, or did I send her off? Seeing Rita who was about to approach him again, Chuhi pulled out his wand unbearably. Okay, Miss Rita, our students have the right to refuse to be interviewed by the Daily Prophet. You should leave Hogwarts. Dumbledore raised his hand, a magic barrier blocked Rita's way, Chuhi put away his wand and left quickly. Tisk tisk tisk, what a arrogant young man, but it doesn't matter, I have already got what I want. With a disgusting smile, Rita turned around and left with her subordinates. Dumbledore looked at the smug Rita and shook his head slightly. He felt that Rita would not give up so easily, and she would probably try to find Chuhi's material. But that kid Chuhi dared to fight against him, and the Dark Wizard and Death Eater also killed a lot. But he persuaded and persuaded, Rita wanted to die, and he couldn't stop it, after all, it was hard to persuade a ghost. Dumbledore returned to his office after sending Rita and her assistant away. After leaving Hogwarts, Rita explained to let her assistant take the Hogwarts Express train to leave first, and then walk to the cabin at Hogwarts Station by herself. In the next second, Rita's body shrank suddenly, and finally turned into a beetle. The pattern around the beetle's eyes was exactly the same as her ugly glasses. Then the carapace on the beetle's back opened, and Rita flapped her wings and flew into Hog. Watts. Yep, yeah, she's an outlaw Gus. So-called illegal Gus or Gus who are not registered with the Ministry of Magic. Because the special magic of Gus has great advantages in spying and stealing secrets, the Ministry of Magic stipulates that all those who practice a Gus need to register with the Ministry of Magic. For a wizard like Chuhi who could discover Voldemort's conspiracy at such a young age, she naturally wouldn't just satisfy the two words Chuhi just told her. The reason why she confidently says that she has got what she wants is actually the fact that she has met with Chu He, and then she just needs to turn into a beetle and follow Chu He to dig for his black material. People are very happy to see the wicked things done behind the scenes by the heroes. 
Even if Chu He didn't do anything wicked, she could satisfy people's curiosity by making some bold speculations through Chu He's character. As for whether these speculations are true, she doesn't care, because the cost of making rumors is very low, and even if Chu He can successfully refute the rumor, no one will care whether Chu He is innocent at that time. She needs to write a lot of smashing articles to satisfy her readers, as well as her ridiculous vanity. Soon, Rita Skeeter learned of Chu He's whereabouts by communicating with other insects. One of the advantages of Agus is that when he becomes an animal, he can understand the language of the animal, thereby collecting intelligence that cannot be collected under normal circumstances. This is why Agus has a unique advantage in espionage work, because Agus gathers intelligence through another species entirely. Rita, who became a beetle, flew not far behind Chu He, and was very proud of herself. Chu He actually dared to show her face. After she collected enough black material, when she returned to the Daily Prophet newspaper, she would make up some scandals and negative news for Chu He. Soon, Rita found that Chu He consciously avoided other students and professors and came to an unmarked room on the southeast corner of the seventh floor of Hogwarts Castle. Araho Cave is open. Chu He pulled out his wand, opened the door with a lock picking spell, and then dodged into the room. Rita hurriedly flew in through the crack of the door, and instinctively told her that she was about to reveal the true face of Chu He. When Rita flew into the room, a spell of light hit the door. However, Rita was not too panicked, because it was a traceless curing spell. Since Chu He was going to do some shady things, he would definitely seal the door. This is a normal operation. Then Rita fell to the ground, crawled to the corner and hid. Silently, the enemy trapped. Chu He cast two more spells in a row, which made Rita more confident in her judgment. I really didn't expect this nine-year-old kid to be so defensive. Then Chu He took out a large tin box from his pocket, opened the lid with his wand, and an evil aura suddenly emerged from the tin box. Rita's heart jumped wildly, there is no doubt that the things in the iron box must be related to evil black magic, as long as the true face of Chu He can be exposed. Maybe she'll be awarded the Order of Merlin. No, no, I heard that Chu He has won a lot of bonuses for exposing Voldemort's true face. Maybe he should use this black material to blackmail Chu He first, and then he will reveal his true face when he gets all his bonuses, or it's not bad to think of him as a cash cow, after all, that bonus is 12,000 gold galleons. Excited, Rita immediately climbed to the ceiling with the beetle's powerful wall climbing ability, and then peeked at the items in the iron box. That's a book. The title is, Worst Magic. The title of the book is not a good thing at first glance. Rita, who grabbed the handle of Chu He, was in a very good mood at this time, but soon, she felt a chill, and things seemed to be a little wrong. Rita looked away from the magic book in the iron box, and moved to Chu He tremblingly, and then found that Chu He was looking at herself incarnated as a beetle with a smile on her face. I gave you a chance to live, but you are useless. Chu He said with a smile, Rita's inner alarm bell rang, and she immediately flapped her wings to escape from the room. Forced appearance. However, after only flying one meter, a magic light hit her tiny beetle body precisely, and then Rita fell heavily from the air to the floor. Gum. Due to the transformation of a Gus, who was separated from the beetle, she lost the ability to fly and also lost the anti-fall feature of the beetle. This fall from midair almost knocked Rita out, but she doesn't dare to coma. Are you happy? Miss Rita. Chu He showed a cold smile and pointed at Rita Skeeter with his wand. You. What do you want to do? It's too late to admit your mistake, you're still a child. Rita looked in horror at Chu He, who pointed her wand at her. You haven't done enough homework, Miss Rita. I spent two months in Azkaban before I entered Hogwarts, and before that, I lived in Nocturne Alley for six years, even myself I don't know how many dark wizards have died at my hands. Rita suddenly felt dark in front of her eyes, and she almost fainted on the spot. What kind of monster did she provoke? Gouging out the bone, the sharp pain suddenly filled Rita's body, causing her to struggle on the floor in pain. Rao, forgive me, Rita pleaded. Forgive you. No, no, you know too much, don't you? You saw that I was studying black magic, and I saw it with your own eyes. Chu He opened his mouth and reminded that in fact when Rita kept up with him, he found that Rita used the Gus to become a beetle, and there was such a nasty guy to watch his life at any time. 
but it was annoying, so he deliberately led Rita into this room. I promise not to reveal your secrets, you, you can use the oblivion spell on me. I will never scribble your reports. Rita crawled on the ground in horror, begging for mercy, because she once again felt the cold killing intent from Chuhi's deep silver eyes. Dead people can better keep secrets. I'm with you. Hellfire. The ice blue calendar fire instantly devoured Rita's body. She couldn't even struggle, and it turned to ashes in a few seconds. Even her soul was burnt out in the flames that consumed everything. After burning Rita, Chuhi tapped his wand to end the fire spell, and then pointed his wand at the thin ashes on the ground. Disappeared. Rita's ashes disappeared from the floor in an instant. If Dumbledore and others were present, they would be surprised that Chuhi's fire spell didn't burn the wooden floor. After all, the Lihuo curse itself is a very powerful magic fire, which will burn all combustibles, and it will become stronger with time. If the magic spell is not mastered, it will even burn the caster to death. Of course, Chuhi's calendar fire spell has also been improved by his magic spell, and the calendar fire spell has been improved into a large-scale AoE magic that can accurately ablate the target and automatically identify friends and foes. Speaking of which, in the process of researching the principles of magic, Chuhi also discovered an interesting phenomenon. Most of the black magic has a trace magic built into it, as if it was deliberately traced. This trace magic is hidden very secretly. Chuhi only discovered this secret two years ago, and then the black magic he used erased this trace magic, making it impossible for others to trace himself through the casting trace. At the same time, he has also developed a special tracking magic that is specially used to find traces of black magic. With this tracking magic, almost no dark wizard or death eater can escape his pursuit. After erasing all traces, Chuhi closed the lid of the box containing the most evil magic book and stuffed it into his pocket, then left the humble room. Three days later, Rita's assistant realized something was wrong and reported it to the editor-in-chief of the Daily Prophet, before the Ministry of Magic sent an order to investigate Rita Skeeter's disappearance. On the second floor of the Hogwarts library, Chuhi was sitting in front of the bookshelf reading a magic book about magical properties. There was a sound of footsteps at this time, and then Chuhi heard a somewhat familiar voice. You, you actually read books here. Chuhi looked up, and Hermione, who was holding a magic book, was looking at him in surprise. Why, can't I come to the library to read? Chuhi replied speechlessly. He never figured out how to deal with the corrosive curse placed on the outer layer of the most evil magic book against the magic power of wizards. In the final analysis, it was because he lacked knowledge about the characteristics of magic power, so these two days when he is free, he will go to the library to read books. Look, it's good to read books, but, but you are so popular, don't you go to play with others? Hermione asked a little sour, and to be honest, she was a little envious of Chu He. Even though Chu He treats the boys and girls with a cold attitude, they still flock to him. Although she also prepared well in class and was very active in answering questions. She could answer whatever the teacher asked, but her brilliance was still overshadowed by Chu He. So when she found out that the much-anticipated Chu He was reading books in a library where no one came, it made Hermione a little uncomfortable. She also wants to be sought after and respected. Play, you have to live to play, Voldemort will come back, I have to get the power to kill him completely before that. Chu He replied calmly. Why, how could it be, isn't he already caught by Dumbledore? He must be executed for such a heinous criminal. Hermione looked at Chu He in surprise. After he went to Harry Potter's house 11 years ago, most people thought he was dead, and he didn't show up again. But isn't it tiring to live when you think like this? There will always be a terrifying opponent staring at you in the dark. Won't your spirit collapse? Hermione asked, and in fact, with her intelligence, after thinking a little about what Chu He said, she thought it was reasonable that Voldemort would return. No, it is better to say that it is because of this vigilance that I can live to this day. Chu He shrugged. What are you looking at? Maybe I can help you. I used to be interested in all kinds of knowledge about the wizarding world. If you want to know something specific, I may know it faster. Hermione said and sat beside Chu He and looked at the magic book in Chu He's hand. She is no longer jealous of Chu He, but rather admires Chu He. He has gained such a prestigious reputation and is sought after by everyone. 
he can still find a way to completely stop Voldemort from coming back. If he himself, he will definitely choose to enjoy it the feeling of being favored by classmates and professors, from this point of view, I can't compare to Chu He. Although she couldn't do anything major, she wanted to support Chu He a little bit. After all, if Voldemort really returned, it wouldn't be a good thing for the kind-hearted wizards. In this way, she was doing her best for the wizarding world. I want to know about magic and corrosion characteristics. In fact, I have seen a curse magic before, which will corrode the magic power in the wizard's body. If it is hit, it is likely to become an irreversible waste. I want to know how to prevent this kind of danger, magic. Chu He answered, corrosion, corrosion. Wait a minute, I remember reading about it in Akramath's Bazaar Mystery, which is a kind of magic obtained by transforming one's own magical properties. Special magic, its effect has the special effect of rapidly assimilating other magic into this magic and rapidly spreading, which is similar to a special poison. Sorry, that book doesn't record how to defend against this special magic, that's all I know. Hermione looked at Chuhi apologetically. It's okay, it's been very helpful, can you tell me more about the characteristics of magic power? Chu He asked with a smile. In fact, it was very helpful for him to understand the mechanism of corrosion. He didn't think he was lucky enough to find the counter curse of that powerful curse from the beginning. Since he found an anti-spell in tens of thousands of magic books, he developed an anti-spell that is more reliable, and as long as he understands the principle, it is not difficult to get along with the solution. Okay, let me tell you. Hermione began to talk eloquently about what she knew about the properties of magic. People around her age don't know much about these advanced magic knowledge, and although the professor will praise herself, she can only show her intelligence when answering questions, so people like Chu He are interested in this kind of advanced magic knowledge. The people are also a good listener for her. More importantly, she saw respect and gratitude in Chu He's eyes, instead of looking at herself with a look that she liked to show off like everyone else. A few hours passed quickly, the bell on the Hogwarts clock tower outside the library struck eight times, and this was a stern-faced middle-aged woman walking over with a chandelier. You two little fellows, the library is going to be closed. Come and see it again tomorrow. The middle-aged woman who spoke was named Ermappens, the manager of the Hogwarts library. Usually a very strict person, but Chuhi is the hero who drives away the Dark Lord after all, so she did not slow down her voice when facing Chuhi. Okay, bye Mrs. Pants. After Chuhi and Hermione politely said goodbye to Ermappens, they left the Hogwarts library side by side. Anyway, you can ask me if you have anything else you want to know. It should be faster than you are holding a book and looking for it. Hermione was in a good mood and said that after a few hours of communication, she found that Chu He is also the kind of person who is very obsessed with magic, and it is not an exaggeration to say that he is a companion. Okay, by the way, Hermione, if you are interested, you might as well study the principles of magic, instead of simply learning magic spells to use magic, you may get some different discoveries. Chu He opened his mouth to remind. When he did things, people always respected him a foot, but he was a foot in return. Hermione was willing to spend a lot of time telling himself this important knowledge, so he naturally planned to pay a little tribute. The principle of magic, um, it seems to be a very interesting topic, I will try it. Then I will go to eat first. Hermione said happily and ran to the restaurant. In Snape's office, Marcus and several other Slytherin Quidditch students were looking at the ground with their heads down and trembling, and they could feel their Dean Snape was very angry at this time. How many of you, are you very promising, go find the juniors in your branch, and do it. Snape has been busy with other things these past few days, so he just learned about Marcus and Chuhi's magical duel. Yes, he asked for a magic duel first, and I'm the one who suffers. In front of Snape, Marcus didn't dare to be too crazy, and said a little aggrieved. Shame on you, Marcus, you seem to have forgotten that I'm a legilimency master. Snape stared at Marcus with cold eyes, and Marcus twitched his neck. To be honest, he was really puzzled. Snape was actually very good to the outstanding people in his branch. As the captain of the Quidditch school team for several consecutive years, he also won a lot of glory for Slytherin. Why did he meet this Chew? He, Dean Snape is so hard on himself. It doesn't make sense. 
What Marcus didn't know was that Chu He and Snape were long-term friends, and they were also Snape's only friends in his life, and the only friends who were still alive. If he went to trouble with Chu He, Snape would naturally be angry. Something happened to He, so Snape probably wanted to peel him off. If you didn't force him to answer the contract in the tone of that order, would he have a magical duel with you? I studied in Slytherin for four years, and you have the face to say if you lose. You guys, the Quidditch training time will be doubled for the next week. Later, if I find out that you are bullying him by forming a gang, you will be punished by confinement or even suspension from school or even expulsion. Snape said coldly. Marcus and the others had little talent for learning, so they punished him by letting them train Quidditch. Ming, I understand. Marcus and the others nodded. Although they didn't know why Snape protected Chuhi so much, they didn't dare to have any opinions. In fact, after Marcus was frightened by Chuhi's smashing curse, he never wanted to face Chuhi again. Even without Snape's warning, they would stay far away when they saw Chuhi. After Marcus and the others left, Snape sat on the chair and thought. Chuhi exposed Voldemort's conspiracy, which is naturally a good thing. Although he had suspected Quirrell for a long time, even he never expected that Voldemort would be boarding on Quirrell. But the good thing is that Chuhi was looking for Minerva McGonagall and Dumbledore to catch Voldemort, so he should have not lost Voldemort's trust. At that time, if Voldemort wants to be detrimental to Chuhi, he should still have a chance to protect Chuhi. But the question is, how exactly did Voldemort come back to life? He also went to Dumbledore after that, but unfortunately all the useful information in Voldemort's remnant soul was destroyed by him in advance, so even Dumbledore's legilimency did not get any useful information. Since Voldemort could not be solved in advance, Snape began to think about whether to teach Chu He some advanced defense against the dark arts to defend himself. He just saw from Marcus through legilimency that Chu He's smashing spell is very skilled in the duel. Whether it is casting magic power or manipulating magic spells, they are all very good. If it is him, maybe can master some powerful spells in advance. After making up his mind, after the potions class the next day, Snape stopped Chu He, who was about to leave. Professor Snape, what's the matter? Chu He asked. Isn't the magic that the first year freshman learnt in the spell class too easy for you? Ah, that's it. Chu He nodded. He went to Professor Flitwick's spells class mainly to hear about the principles of various spells. He needed knowledge in this area to improve spells. As for the spells that first year freshman learned, he was already got it. Then, do you want to learn some high-end defense against the dark arts? You know, the mysterious man will make a comeback one day. Snape asked. High-end defense against the dark arts. Chu He fell into his thoughts. From the perspective of lethality, black magic such as the unforgivable curse is actually better. This is why Barty Crouch was called the director of the Magic Law Enforcement Department. The reason for the Jagged Chief, because he allowed the Aurors to use the unforgivable curse in the process of arresting the Death Eaters. From this point of view, it can be seen that black magic is superior to ordinary magic in terms of attack. And he himself is very proficient in black magic. I currently have a few spells that I plan to give to you, Shenfeng Wying, a spell created by me, the Patronus spell, which can deal with Dementors and Voldemort bats, and the Calendar Fire Ending spell, which can end the Black Magic Calendar Fire spell, which do you want to learn first? Seeing that Chu He was thinking, he mistakenly thought that Chu He did not know any high-end defense against the Dark Arts, so Snape took the initiative to propose. Then ask Professor Snape to teach me the Patronus charm first. Chu He asked. Okay, I did think that you would be the first to choose this ancient guardian spell, but this ancient magic is very advanced, and you may have to learn it for a long time. Snape nodded. From his point of view, it was understandable that Chu He had been in Azkaban and had been tortured by Dementors. But what Snape didn't know, Chu He didn't have any psychological shadow on Dementors at all. He was interested in the Patronus charm mainly because of the effect of the Patronus charm on another magical creature, the Voldemort. The Dementor's food is good, optimistic memories, and positive emotions, but he doesn't have any memories that the Dementor can take away, which makes the Dementor not at all offensive to him. In addition, the soul-based magic controlled by family members is also gradually improving, and Chuhi does not need the Patronus charm to repel the Dementors. 
he can completely use family control to force them. But another magical creature, Voldemort, is tricky. Voldemort is a magical creature with a black cape. Almost all spells have no attack effect on it. The only effective one is the Patronus spell to drive away Voldemort. In the past, there was a dark wizard who drove the Voldemort bat to kill Chu He, so that he had to use all round traps around him before going to bed for a month. As soon as he noticed the Voldemort bat, he would use apparition to run away until he was killed. It was the dark wizard who was the master who got rid of this pursuit. Now that Snape was willing to teach himself the Patronus charm, he certainly would. After all, a high-end spell such as the Patronus spell is not recorded in a random book of spells purchased outside. Okay, take this notebook back and look at it first. It is what I learned when I practiced the Patronus charm. It records some tips. Remember that the Patronus charm needs to use good memories as the core of strength to concretize it. Released with a wand. The second half of the note is the attacking spell Shenfeng Wang Zhuan that I developed by myself. If you have reached a bottleneck in the practice of the Guardian Angel, you might as well try to learn the Shen Feng Wang Zhuan. Snape took out an old notebook and handed it to Chu He. Thank you, Professor Snape. Chu He took the notebook and opened it, and was surprised to find that it was actually a notebook of magic principles. If you think about it carefully, Snape can see that he has a profound research on the principles of magic when he can create his own magic. Being able to hand over this precious manual of magic principles to himself, Snape obviously trusted himself very much, and Chu He couldn't help feeling a little moved when he thought of this. Professor Snape, I'm afraid I have something to confess to you. Chu He hesitated, since Snape treated him so well, he felt it was time to give back to Snape, but he still needed to pass a small test. What's up? Snape asked. I've been in Azkaban because I used the unforgivable curse to kill the muggle who robbed me. I know, Dumbledore told me about your past, and I don't mind, as long as you don't kill Harry Potter, we'll be friends forever. Snape looked at Chu He calmly. Harry Potter. Chu He was a little surprised, after all, in Snape's potions class, Snape didn't give Harry Potter a good look. He's the son of a woman I love, I was a Death Eater back then, and I couldn't protect her, so at least her son illegitimate child. Chu He asked subconsciously, and then saw Snape glaring at him unhappily. It wasn't. I was addicted to the dark magic and I finally broke with her, and she had that child with my rival James Potter. Snape sighed, he only told Chu He about this, because he really thought that Chu He was his only friend, and Chu He took the initiative to confess to himself that he had entered Azkaban, so he felt that he too. Something to say. That's it. Chu He took out his wand from his sleeve, and then tapped the tip of the wand on his temple. Quote question mark quote. Snape looked at Chu He with some doubts. It wasn't that he couldn't see that Chu He planned to use legilimency to extract a part of his own memory, but what he didn't understand was what Chu He wanted to show himself. Afterwards, Chu He extracted the memory related to the passive anti-curse of the unforgivable curse he created, and then put it into a vial and handed it to Snape. He wouldn't treat his friends badly. Of course, the reason why he didn't give Cassandra or Hermione this memory was not because he was reluctant, but because the unforgivable curse was a bit deep for them, and it was unforgivable after all. The curse may cause discomfort to both of them. After you find the right materials, make them an accessory that is immune to the unforgivable curse. Snape was different. He had been a Death Eater, and he could accept that he had killed Muggles in the past. He would definitely understand himself, so he taught Snape this precious research memory. And Snape's getting stronger, and he'll be able to help him when he fights Voldemort himself. Professor Snape, this is my previous research on the unforgivable curse. Please take a look. Of course, if you have anything that can be improved after reading it, please let me know. Okay, I'll take a look. Snape took the vial and put it in his pocket. Then Chu He left the potions classroom with Snape's research notes on spells. That night, Snape borrowed a pensive from Dumbledore and put the Chu He memory in the glass bottle into the pensive. To be honest, Snape himself didn't value Chu He's memory too much before watching it. After all, Chu He was just a nine-year-old child. Remembering yourself is more based on the behavior of friends giving gifts to each other. But when Snape's consciousness came out of the pensive, he sat blankly on his bed, unable to regain his senses for a long time. 
That kid actually developed a passive triggering protection spell for the three unforgivable spells. It can be said that as long as there is Chu He's improved counter curse, he will be invincible against Dark Wizards, and even Voldemort has the strength to fight. He now understands why Chu He didn't apprentice, the reason is very simple, he can't teach a genius like Chu He. I'm afraid only Dumbledore could possibly be qualified to teach Chu He, but he wouldn't allow that to happen, because Dumbledore isn't exactly as kind as he looks. He's an old wizard who takes the big picture and God knows if he will one day sacrifice Chu He for what benefit. Snape began to carefully practice Chu He's improved counter curse against the life slaying curse. Since Chu He has given himself this memory that can be said to be a sensation in the magic world, it means that he should have certain expectations for himself. And that kind of expectation is probably up to him to fight Voldemort to the death. He absolutely must respond to this expectation, and this time, he must protect his only remaining friends. Tisk, This Patronus charm doesn't seem to suit me. On the other side, in Chuhi's secret classroom, Chuhi looked at the white halo on the tip of his staff and was not very satisfied. It was the Patronus charm he tried to cast after reading Snape's notes. The difficulty of the Patronus charm itself is not difficult for him, after all, he has even mastered the forbidden charm, but the problem lies in the good memories. He doesn't have many good memories, after all, only the memory of Cassandra feeding herself macarons on the Hogwarts Express. The Patronus charm requires very happy memories to support, in fact, it is the embodiment of a person's inner happiness, and this level of memory cannot make him release a more powerful Patronus charm. Perhaps, I have to improve the Patronus charm a little bit. The Patronus spell is a high-end, ancient defensive spell. From Snape's notes, the purpose of the Patronus charm is to create a silver-white Patronus in the form of an animal, and this animal-shaped Patronus is actually the embodiment of a person's heart. Most witches and wizards can't use a complete Patronus, on the one hand because their magical power is not enough to use the Patronus charm, and on the other hand because they don't have two dazzling memories. But to be honest, after reading Snape's notes, Chuhi was a little confused about the Patronus charm. Because good things are the food of the Dementors, and although the Patronus charm can concretize inner happiness as a kind of defensive shield or be used to expel Dementors, from the principle of the curse, it is because the Dementors' monsters have no effect on animals, and the power of the Patronus charm transforms into emotionless animals, repelling Dementors. It puzzled him to take food to fight off enemies who feed on it. But if you think about it in another way, if the Patronus charm does not rely solely on good memories, but uses a strong will to form a Patronus, then you should be able to use the Patronus in its full form. The reason why the Patronus charm that has been passed down needs good memories may be because good and happy memories are easier to obtain than strong wills. After all, every time a Dementor has a lethal effect on oneself, it can more or less test this theory. There is no doubt that Chu He is a person with a high level of action. Since he has this kind of thinking, he naturally tries to modify it first. Even if he fails, it doesn't matter. It's time to change his thinking. He who has improved the forbidden spell will naturally not retreat just because the Patronus spell is an ancient one. Moreover, there are not many parts that he needs to improve, just a little improvement of the source of power of the Patronus charm and the mechanism of action of the Patronus charm does not need to be improved. Five hours later, Chu He took a deep breath, raised the hand holding the wand, and then mobilized the magic in his body to flow towards the wand. At the same time, what he thought in his mind was that the Death Eater who enslaved him was killed by himself. And a life and death struggle over the years. He will not lose to anyone. No one can be above himself, this is his dignity and his pride. God guard. The wand shook violently uncontrollably, and Chu He quickly controlled his wand with all his strength. The last time this happened was when he was almost drained of his magic power by the forbidden spell. But this time he felt that he still had the ability to control his Patronus spell, so Chu He didn't interrupt the spell. Then a huge explosion sounded, and the thick stone walls of the classroom he used as his secret base exploded directly, revealing the sky outside Hogwarts Castle. Above the sky, is a silver four-clawed dragon with a body length of nearly 1,000 meters. Chuhi felt a special connection with the Azumo dragon above the sky, as if as long as he gave the relevant will, he could even cause violent storms through his Patronus spell, or dispel the clouds to make the sky as open to the sun. 
This, this is really a pleasant surprise. It is indeed his own guardian angel. Although it may be that the source of power is not right, this guardian dragon has physical attack ability, but in general, it is developing in a positive direction. At this moment, a silver phoenix flew out of Hogwarts castle, and then rose into the clouds to confront the silver wandering dragon overlooking all living beings. At the same time, a gray vortex appeared around Chu He, and then Dumbledore's figure emerged from it. Little guy, did you fix it? Dumbledore looked at the silver wandering dragon facing off against his patron god Phoenix in the sky with some surprise. This level of patron saint, let alone seeing it, he has never heard of it. Ah, uh, yes, it's my patron saint. I didn't control it well the first time I used it, ahem. Chu he scratched his hair awkwardly. You patron saint, it's a little different. Dumbledore carefully observed the dragon of Azumo above the sky. The usual Patronus incantation is a kind of light and protective power, but this guardian dragon in the sky gives people a cold feeling of being killed by the master. It's not a death curse that requires the caster to have great malice like the Avada Solitaire, but a pure, killing and conquering feeling without a trace of emotion. Yes, it's a little different. Chu he had no choice but to follow Dumbledore's words. Before using it, he didn't expect this kind of power. If he could have known in advance, he would definitely have apparated to a place where no one was there to test it. This is the bad thing about improving magic. Before the test, he didn't know the power of this magic spell. Dumbledore would have caught it, and he could only play stupid. You, have you improved the Patronus charm? Dumbledore asked. Ah, dot you seem to think too highly of me. Chu he decided to continue to carry out the act of dressing silly. Don't lie to me, my phoenix is also a high level Patronus charm that has been improved by me. It seems that you and I have chosen different paths of improvement. I don't mean to blame you. Dumbledore spoke slowly. Chu he didn't say a word and didn't answer Dumbledore's words. He didn't know what medicine was sold in Dumbledore's pot. But at this time, through his guardian dragon, Chu he already felt that the attention of all the students and professors in the whole school was attracted to him. The Voldemort incident had already made him suffer from being too popular, and he immediately thought. Thousands of meters of silver dragons flew towards the outside of Hogwarts, and finally disappeared at the end of the sky. In fact, after being out of sight of everyone, Chuhi manipulated his guardian dragon to shrink his body to an insignificant size and retracted it into his wand. Then Chuhi's wand point, the repair spell quickly repaired the wall that was previously blown up by the silver dragon. Looks like you don't want other students to know that this is your patron saint. Seeing that Chuhi had no intention of starting a war, Dumbledore also summoned the Phoenix Patronus to return to his side. What, you want to threaten me with this? Chuhi looked at Dumbledore warily. How come, you are not someone who can control this kind of threat, and I should be happy that Hogwarts can produce a gifted student like you, please remember, I am not your enemy, as long as you don't take Voldemort's path. Dumbledore said kindly, I hate dominating others through fear. You know I've been enslaved by Death Eaters. I want to kill Voldemort completely. Seeing that Dumbledore treated him very well, Chu he couldn't continue to lose his face. As long as Dumbledore didn't try to pry into his memory, he was actually quite talkative. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.